What's up guys? Welcome back to Maestro Vapes. Today, as you see in the title, you're looking at the Revolt RDA made by Hazematic. Um, it's Canadian. It's Canadian, which is super cool in my personal opinion. This is a pre-production model of this atomizer that I've been using for the last couple few weeks, building it up, but it drops today. It drops today check out his website it's going to be in the description below and i'll caption it somewhere in this video for sure as well uh lester was cool enough lester from hazematic cool enough to send me a pre-production one to check out and i've been digging it thoroughly okay one thing about this atomizer when i saw it on the website i just thought this is like a doge like a doge v2 and it's going to be a fog machine but it freaked me out a little bit because when i got it the deck on it was relatively small, you know, and I looked at it out of a different viewpoint at the, at that moment, you know, I just thought this is going to be a flavor addy. This is going to be a flavor addy that produces clouds. Now, last year I got the Hobo, I got the Aeolus, I did a video for the Aeolus. Um, long story short, what I expected those atomizers to be is what this atomizer is. So it's funky because it is this great flavor addy that produces clouds like it just works okay uh, first couple of builds I put into it I did 20 gauge build twisted 22 shit that I just hammer out the insulators and try and murder it with they were too rowdy they were too rowdy for this atomizer and I had to tune it back a little bit so I'm going to share a build with you that just performs excellent it's going to be a build that you can use on a standard Mac mod, a tube mod, or you could put it on a regulated box and it's going to perform really, really well. Okay, but enough about that ish. Let's talk a little bit about this guy. Okay, it's made out of 316 medical grade stainless steel. Top cap, drip top, has an insulator in it to keep it cool. That insulator is made of peak. Okay, so it's made a peak. You, I'm using it with the optional top cap, which is also a peak sleeve um, because I find it keeps it nice and cool. Okay, but we'll go in, check it out, show you all the goodies, build it, wick it, come back, talk a little bit more about the pros and cons with this guy. All right, so let's go in. all right here it is up close all right so the revolt from haze matic this is what you're gonna get out of the package all right so it's got some logoing on there and it's pretty funky it's pretty funky logoing on this guy i dig this thing a lot all right i got this with a little bag of tricks what came in my bag of tricks well i'll show you um it didn't come with the production packaging but it did come with, there's a stainless steel center post in here. That was already in here. I swapped it out for the copper one that you're going to see in a sec. Also got a little Allen wrench in here. Three extra hex screws in there. And some extra O-rings. All right. Pretty funky. Pretty funky. Haven't had to dig into those O-rings for any reason yet. All right. But the atomizer is pretty cool. Okay. Looking at it big drip top on it it also comes with let me find this thing here also comes with this 510 drip tip adapter okay i've got a trinity drip tip in here this drip tip doesn't come with it all right uh pretty funky we'll look at that in a sec too let's look at the bottom of this guy all right so the bottom of this guy has some logoing on here it's, uh, it says 316 medical grade stainless steel. That's what this whole thing's made out of. It says Revolt by Hazematic Canada on it, which is pretty funky. Pretty funky indeed. Copper pin in here. This copper pin and the copper post are C110 uh, copper. So that's lead free as well as oxygen free copper. All right. I'm going to take the deck out of here and set that aside for a second because that's pretty funky in itself okay now it's got a sleeve adjustable airflow on here you could dial it down to small pinholes if you like it's got single coil option as well as your dual coil slots okay you can open this thing up pretty big 
All right, pretty big. And if you wanna go for some flavor, you can grab this uh, sleeve, flip it upside down, and then you get a much smaller slot in there as well, all right? Which is pretty cool. If you wanna chase flavor out of this atomizer, you can. And I dig these versatile atomizers, like I really truly do. But I typically rock this thing pretty much you know, three quarters open, and I get a really nice flavor out of it. Really, really nice. So, let me get rid of this sleeve, okay? There's that. Now, the inner, the top cap section of this has two O-rings on here. These O-rings are silicone O-rings, um, and it's got two little slots in here, all right? Pop this top. Kind of got to put my finger in here to get it out. Um, machining on this thing is really nice like super clean. It's super clean, dig it a lot. There's no Sharpies, no gnarly chunkies or anything like that. Really well machined atomizer, all right? Now the drip tip section on this thing is cool as well. At first I thought this was Delrin, but the material he's using in this is actually Peak, okay? So the same thing that your insulators are typically made out of, um, is the top cap insulator, okay? So top cap is, once again, 316 stainless steel, medical grade with the peak insert in there, and it's got those silicone O-rings there as well. All right, pretty funky. Now, I just wanna show you one thing. This is kind of an optional accessory that you can get with this Addy, and I would highly suggest it. If you're gonna get this thing, I would highly suggest getting this uh, peak top cap as well, because this is gonna help you out a lot with heat from your builds, all right? So you would use this just the same, except you'd have like this little dark spot showing. So once you put this together, have a little bit of uh, darkness to it as well, a little bit of contrast. I dig the look, but I dig the function of this very much, all right? Um, let's say you wanted to use a 510 tip. Oh man, it's in there tight right now. I just wash this out. You just take the 510 adapter, which is conical, throw it in there, boom, you're off to the races. So then it starts looking like this. Nice and clean, smooth lines. If you had a flush kind of straight tip in there, it would look super clean as well. But I kind of like the wide bore of these Trinity tips, these nip tips. All right, so there's that. These are all your components go together. Really cool, man, really cool. Now the deck of this thing. It's got your silicone O-rings once again. The deck is funky, okay? Let me find something to just kind of point at this here. See what I can do here, all right? So I'm gonna put this on something so I'm just not throwing it around everywhere. Put this on the 150 box. So you can see it's got the hex screws in there, okay? Hex screws connect, hold your wire in place really, really well. Now, if you can see in here, these negative posts are milled into the deck, but just to the edge. Like I can put my screwdriver underneath them, which is kind of weird. It kind of freaked me out at first, but you're gonna be able to get a little bit more juice in this thing because these are floating posts. And I think the design concept was really, really cool with this. Really cool. And the funky thing is as well, is they're not machined all the way through. They're not drilled all the way through. They're just drilled out to just below that hole. So once you tighten down your contacts, they're gonna make with the base of that and you're gonna have a nice strong connection and you're rarely gonna break wire on that, which is super cool. Now. I've got the copper post in here. Like I said, it's the C110 lead-free, oxygen-free copper post. And the pin, the 510 pin comes up just below that post hole. So it's gonna do the same thing. Nice, nice connection in there, all right? All of these post holes are 2.5 millimeter. So you're gonna be able to put in anything you want in this, okay? Anything. Now, the build deck of this thing is not the biggest build deck. All right, it really isn't. It actually kind of reminded me, when I first built it, it kind of reminded me of building my hobo out, 
but it's not quite as small as the hobo, but it is a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller to work with, all right? Same thing in here. There's a peak insulator at the base of this positive pin, all right? Very funky. Everything here is really clean. Now, the one thing that I do find is with these milled posts being solid at the bottom, they do retain a little bit of heat, and then there's heat transference to the base of this. There is a bit of heat transference. I thought it would actually be the opposite, but that's what I've been finding. Been finding it. But to eliminate any heat transference, when I use this peak insulator top cap section, it's beautiful. Like it is beautiful. Dissipates mostly all of the heat, and it's excellent. And I always rock it with the drip top. Actually, with the, with the drip tip, with the 510 adapter, the flavor in this thing is phenomenal, all right? Let's build this thing out, okay? Now, I'm gonna do a build that is all around really good. Like, you could use it on a regulated box, you could use it in a mech with this atomizer, and it is just gonna perform just how you want it to. Just how you want it to. So, what am I gonna be building? Uh, I'm just going to cut a piece of wire in half here, like so, and I'm going to build 22 gauge canthal build in this, all right? Pretty simple build. I got two strands here. Let's build it out. Let's build it out. I'm going to grab a screwdriver, so I'm going to throw in my 22 gauge canthal, and I'm going to throw in five wraps. Now that's gonna allow me to have a good vape on a regulated box, good vape on a Mac if I want. There's my five wraps. Give the legs a little bit of a tug. There we go. Then squish this all together. Boom, just like that. All right, this one last pull. Now what I like to do is, I like to push down on this leg a little bit, just to kind of kink it at the coils where it's kind of popping out, like that, just to round it out to a perfect little wrap. Same thing on this one, just bring it up just a little bit so they're just pumping right out. Now another thing you can do to center up your coils a little bit, this is kind of awkward for me here, but... I'll just put a little kink in the wire this way, which kind of looks awkward, right? But then, from where the coil starts, I'll put another kink into it, and then it'll just bring it over, just like that. Okay? Center up your coils a little bit, all right? Now I'm going to do the same thing with this other coil, and then we'll put it all together. Just gonna go in, attack, hit that center post, line it up here, all right? Now, I go pretty much to the outside of that deck. Then I snug all of these up here. Well, all of these negs <laughs> on the one side. Snug up that negative. Now I'll leave my center post loose, okay? You can push it over a little bit here, but I don't go too far just because I still gotta put another piece of wire through here, right? All right, same type of attack going into that negative. Now I'm gonna line up my positive and I'm just gonna get it running right beside the other one. Well, kind of want those to just be pretty symmetrical right here. Snug up that negative. Okay. Make sure that lead is okay in here. It's pretty close. So I'm just going to start snugging up the center.
All right, there we go. Simple as that. These little hex screws kind of suck sometimes <laughs> to build. All right. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to elevate these legs just to take a little bit of the tension off. But really, with those milled posts, it really doesn't go down too much more. Like you've already made a good contact, which is really cool about this thing. Gonna move those center legs out a bit. And I'll probably get a quarter turn out of this. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Clip those out. These center guys, I just go pretty close. Let's use the tips of my cutters to cut those off be careful don't cut into your other leg there we go. bambo okay now we can center this up a little bit okay make sure that's in there tight yeah it looks pretty good we just want to push it a little bit over There's that one. Get this guy. There we go. And I think we're going to be pretty good here. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Now we could check the resistance. That's always a smart thing to do. You know, no matter how long you've been building coils, how many coils you've built, you can always make mistakes. You know, you can always have a short. You don't know. So it's always good to check. So where are we at here? So we're around 0.11. All right, so this will fire on a regulated mod. It'll fire on a mech like a beast. Be sure you're using 30 amp batteries, okay? That's the only advice I'll give you. No shorts, 30 amp batteries, and you're probably going to be in the no. You know, you'll be all right. Let's pinch these up. Now, the resistance of this will might go up a little bit, or you could have it be around 0.13. I've had it fluctuate. Where are we at here? Reading point one, 97 watts. Let me tune this down a little bit. We'll go to about 80-ish. Start pinching these up. So get them nice and snug. Have every everybody living together in perfect harmony here should be pretty close man maybe the other one's glowing a little bit hotter eh? A little bit tighter to the posts, maybe. No, now it's this guy. Give him a quick pinch. We're going to be good. Now, because I pinched that one, it's cooler. But that's going to work out pretty good for this, all right? Some of the old water and juice is just cooking out of that post right now. Now, what are we going to wick with, dude? What the hell are we going to wick with today? Get rid of some of this. I want to check this resistance just one more time here because I got a feeling. Wow, she's hot. Um, 
I got a feeling that it's probably gone up a little bit. After pinching those coils, now they're on lock. They're just in place where they want to be. I got a feeling that this thing's gone up to about 0 0.13. At least 0.12. Yeah, 0.13. And that's usually where this thing comes in, is right around 0 0.13, 0.14-ish even. It's kind of hot, so it's fluttering a little bit, but it will come down to about 0.13. That's where it is, okay? Now, wicking it. What should we wick this thing with? I kind of want to just wick it traditional, organic cotton style. Kind of want to do that. But I kind of want to do cotton bacon. Oh, yeah. I'll do cotton bacon because it's been a minute since I've used it. And I really dug using cotton bacon. There was like... A moment there where that's all I did. Just cotton bacon all day long, okay? Now, some people have asked me about cotton bacon, said it tastes really cottony when they wick. Um, the only advice I could give you that's good advice is you're probably over wicking a little bit. And it's easy to do that because it's kind of clumpy a little bit, you know? They're really nice and tight pieces of cotton, but you gotta fluff it out a little bit. And that's the only way that you're gonna get nice wicking out of this. And it just performs really, really well. So you might be over wicking if you're getting that cottony taste. I just find a nice bit that I can put in here. That should be perfect to do two coils, all right? Put the other stuff away. And I'm just going to even it out a little bit, just to make sure that my wicking is going to be on a point. Move some of this stuff out of the way here. All right. Now, when you're going to wick this, you're going to, to do the method that I do, you're going to need like a cloth or something like that to roll against. Okay. You're going to need something for traction, something to just grip it a little bit. Okay. So I got like a kitchen towel, you know. Hopefully it's clean, you know, you want to make sure that it's clean. I roll out my cotton bacon a little bit, make sure there's no chunks in it. And I'm going to get a good vape out of it, all right? Then I just roll it. Cotton bacon's pretty easy because you've already kind of taken out any chunks or lumps. You just want to get a cylinder going, that's it. And I keep it nice and fluffy. This camera is really in the way today, man. But that's it. Just get that cylinder, rip it right down the middle. And we're going to be in biz soon, okay? Oh, get rid of that towel. We don't need it. Okay. Let's roll up a point on one end. Do the other one up. And we're close, man. Really nice and light. Like it looks like a shit ton, right? But it's light. Like it is light. Okay. Attack this bad boy up. Oh, like a 13-year-old virgin right now. <laughs> Just draw it in. Not like uber super tight, but just nice. You know, you want your, your juice to be able to run through it. You know, you don't want it to just get to the coil and that's it. If you can have your juice kind of flowing through the wick effectively, that's what you're after. You know, that's really what you're after. Like I've seen people just say, oh, as long as it's delivering to the coils or they need to space their wick out, it's because you're over wicking, man. as it looks like there's just a ton of cotton in here, right? Yeah, I get it. Draw that through. I'm coming to a bit of a clump here. Pull through that clump. We're going to be all right. Yeah, perfect. 
perfect, okay? Now, got some room here to tuck this cotton underneath this, but I go right to the deck, right to the outside of the deck, get rid of that, and just push it in, okay? Pretty simple. Simple is nice when you're building. Like, getting too elaborate or intricate, yeah, it's fun to play with, but like if you're building coils sometime, you're on your way to work or you gotta go somewhere, you don't wanna do this fucking elaborate build and elaborate wicking and just, it's kind of a pain, you know? So simplicity to me is nice. Leave a little hole underneath there and just tuck. And I always go just start at the bottom and then bring it down. That's it. It's weird. I haven't built a coil or re-wicked in like a week right now. So it's like, feels like it's brand new to me. Like it's not flowing. <laughs> I'm sure it's all right. Just going to make sure everything's just sitting to the bottom of the deck in here. Because the deck is pretty substantial in this guy. Like there's room for juice. I kind of dig that about this thing. All right. Get that all in there. Just tuck, tuck, tuck to your heart's content. And that's going to wick so nice. Just airy and fluffy. It's just going to draw the juice in, not get clogged up. This is how you want it, you know? Like a lot of people contact me and say, oh, I did your build and it's not performing well. It's like, well, what's your wicking like? You know, and they're like, we put it in super tight, like I saw in this video from whoever. And I'm like, no, don't do that. You know, airy, light, fluffy, and easy. That's it. That's it, man. All right. Now, I'm going to juice this thing up with some animal looper because I fucking love <laughs> this shit, man. Like, I could be the spokesperson for looper. And the flavor out of this atomizer is nice. Just that deck is the perfect size for a good flavor addy. You know, like it's just perfect. You can get decent clouds out of it. You know, is it a total cloud addy? I don't think so. I think it's kind of a flavor addy that can push clouds, you know? And I think a lot of people were trying to do that with atomizers at the end of last year. And some of them were okay and some weren't. Like, I think the Hobo was going for that. I think the Aeolus was pushing for that. And I think this is like those atomizers done right. Let me boil off some of this juice. And then we can have a vape off this thing. All right. Now, I'm going to use it with the optional peak sleeve or top cap section, I guess. The drip top. Just gonna tune down my airflow to about three quarters on this build, maybe a little bit more. And line it up. And we are good, okay? Hazematic Revolt. Let's take it out. All right. Wow. Very nice, very nice. The build really suits this atomizer super well. It just, they go together just hand in hand. They are like best of friends right now. And I'm fogging out my living room pretty hard just vaping on it. Cause I vaped on this for like a couple of minutes before I even hit record, you know? But it's, it's really, really nice. Um, a couple of things that I did find with this thing that were kind of on the con side were when I got it, I wash it out. I have like a ritual that I do. Typically, it gets out most of the machine oil taste or all of it and, you know, a lot of atomizers. This did have a little bit of machine oil flavor, little residue that was left over. And I really had to scrub out the O-rings and where the O-rings sit in order to get rid of that. 
okay? So make sure if you get one of these, you wash it very thoroughly, very, very thoroughly, and you're gonna get an awesome, awesome vape out of it. Um, using the standard top cap, this is your standard top cap, where your airflow control sleeve sits, it was getting a little hot. It was getting a little hot when I was doing low resistance builds. I built it with like 24 gauge and 26 gauge tigers, stuff like that, and that was not a problem with this. But when I did go lower, even slightly with this 22 gauge build, it does warm up a little bit and retain a little bit of that heat. So using the optional top cap, the peak top cap, has been brilliant. Like it works really, really well, man, really well. Uh, the insulated drip top is awesome. Using it with the 510 drip tip adapter, flavor is off the chain. Like it is off the chain. And like I said in the introduction, the Hobo and the Aeolus, what I envision them to be before I use those atomizers is what this is, you know? This thing is definitely a nice flavor slash cloud balance, you know? But the flavor is much more predominant, much more predominant in this guy. So I've been using it a lot. Like it's actually in my daily rotation for I guess the last three weeks that I've been using it. I dig it. Like I don't want to leave the house without it. I've been using it a lot on the regulated box on the Segelli 150. And I've kind of been thinking about using it on my DNA 40. Like I think I could put a nickel build into this and just deliver some serious flavor out of it. So very, very versatile atomizer, very versatile atomizer. Now it's kind of like a classic style Addy, three post Addy with some tweaks to it that are really funky. Like those elevated kind of floating negative posts, that design concept is very cool, very cool. The way they're milled out so that it doesn't cut your wire is fucking very cool. Peak insulated top cap and the drip tip insulator very very cool design the fact that it comes with two different center posts you can run it if you don't feel good about using it with a copper post although the copper post is lead free oxygen free process to make that thing if you don't feel good about it you can use it with a stainless steel center post as well and it's pretty easy to swap out pretty easy to swap out i would, probably wouldn't do it every day because your insulator is going to wear out you know and you'll get spinning center post but if you know what you're going to use, put it in there and boom, you're set. You are set. Um, if you are adjusting that 510 pin on the bottom, tread lightly. You know, it, it can strip out easily if you hammer it out. So there's that. Um, it's funky. It's a funky design. And I want to thank Lester so much. Hazematic.com for sending it to me to check out because it's been a pleasure to use this thing. It's been a pleasure to use this thing been digging it a lot but yeah a little bit deceptive almost you know i thought it's just cloud addy and it produced some of the most wonderful flavor that i've got to try you know in an addy of this stature you know what i mean does that make sense hopefully it does you know that's really it for me you know i've i've been digging it a lot haven't been shooting a lot of videos i got fucking shit going on man like fuck maybe i'll talk about it in a vlog i don't know we'll see how that shit goes but whatever that's it for me guys remember like i say butt out vape up and breathe easy know your limits and vape within it so know your limit man like use a 30 amp battery at least you know and if you've been using them for you know you got a vtc3 that you've been using for a year and a half and it's gone through like 700 charge cycles it might be time to replace it, you know, because that thing's wearing out on you, you know? If you got rips in your battery casing, get a rewrap, buy some rewrap tubing, it's pretty easy to do. Um, check for shorts, you know, check for shorts. Simple stuff, but a lot of people overlook it, especially if you've been building for a while. I know a lot of people who have been building a long time that don't even put their builds on an ohm reader, like do it, just do it because your insulator might be worn out in your Addy and you don't know when it's shorting and fuck man, you don't want your fucking battery bursting. You know what I mean? That's just not what you want. So play safe. All right, my friends, it's pretty much it. Have a stellar 
day, my friends. All right. I will catch you on the next one. Lester, cool atomizer, my brother. Very cool. All right. Take it out with a vape because the flavor is fucking awesome for, for this thing, man. Wow. Fuck, it is good.